Well, we're going to look at some scripture today. It's found in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 through 21. If you follow along with me, because this is what I called a power-packed praise. The Apostle Paul is praising God in a marvelous way as he prays for the Christians in Ephesus. And I want to read this to you, and I want you to follow along and, and let the words ooze out of this scripture into your mind and into your heart. Listen to it, and then we can make application as to what he's talking about. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Let me read that again. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man man. That video is about our weaknesses. We don't like to think that we have weaknesses. And yet God says that he wants to strengthen us in the inner man. The next verse says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being uh, rooted and grounded in that love. May he be able to comprehend with all the saints that breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ with passive knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Think about that. Being filled with all the fullness of God. Now in him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Look at the praise that Paul is putting forth concerning God, concerning Christ, the Holy Spirit. He is praising God in a mighty, mighty way. He's telling us something about God and who he is and what he means to us and what he can provide in our particular life. This scripture will look through the window of your soul this morning if you allow him to do so. Think about that window of your soul and, and the scripture can look through that window and can penetrate into our hearts and God can see us like we cannot see ourselves. And God wants to do a work in our lives. And that's what he's talking about here to the church at Ephesus. Life-changing. This scripture is transforming. This scripture will bring transparency to our lives. Don't you want to be transformed today? Don't you want to have your life changed? Don't you want to be transparent? God is able to do that in our lives if we open up our lives unto him. I'd like to talk about a few things in this scripture that we see and follow along with me. The first one is this. Our greatest need is for spiritual power in our inner being. Our greatest need is for spiritual power in our inner person. Think about that. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened by might, by his spirit in the inner man. That is where we are the weakest. We are not the weakest when it comes to the body. Yes, sometimes health issues causes our body to be weak. But most of the time we think about strength, we think about our bodies, how strong we are. And we exercise the bodies, don't we? How many of you are on an exercising program? Not very many of you, okay? Maybe we need to get on one, huh? I know, you take the Bible literally when it says bodily exercise profiteth little. Well, let me tell you something. Exercising is important. And you've heard me say many times, my wife and I go to the gym a couple times a week and and we work out. I told my marriage class this morning, I said, we go out there, and I said, she's so cotton-picking pretty, and all those old men out there just looking at her all the time. So we work out together. We get on the same treadmill, and we run on the same treadmill, and we lift the same weight, and no, we really don't do that, okay? <laughs> you really thought that was happening, don't you? And so we got our muscles all toned up, but the fact of the matter is, that's not my problem. My problem isn't the body. You know, I've, I've still got some muscles. My wife every once in a while reaches over there, and I'll, I'll flex them. You know, guys, you, you like that, don't you? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what it's like. Not the left arm, I don't have, she always did my right arm, okay? And so, I, I don't have a problem there, but I tell you, I do have a problem in my inner person. I'm not as strong there as I thought that I was. 
I learned something a long time ago, and it was, it was a hard a pill to swallow. I learned that when I was in high school, I, I learned that I'm not as hot as I thought I was. I thought I was a pretty cool guy when I was in high school. I thought, in fact, as I told my class this morning, my wife thought I was the most arrogant person in the world. And I really, I really thought I was somebody until God had to teach me differently. I, I realized I was a pretty weak person. I was not as strong as I thought I was. I realized one day I'm not as wise as I thought I was. I realized one day I'm not as resilient as I thought I was. I realized I was not as resourceful as I thought I was. I have abilities and I have talents, but I'm pretty weak. And I realized that I'm not what I thought I was. And here's why we need to be strengthened inwardly. Here are some things we're going to list for you today. And you'll find out that maybe you're not as strong as you thought you were, and you do need God, and God wants to strengthen us, an inner man with might by his spirit. Here's some reasons we need to be strong. Because there are enemies that we face. You're facing enemies constantly in your life. And you need that strength of God when you face those enemies, whatever they may be, or whoever they may be, or whatever it might be. We need to have strength to face those enemies of our life. The second thing is there are trials that we experience. Each and every one of us are going through some kind of a trial today. Yours is different than mine. We need strength. How do we react and how do we handle the trials that we're going through on this very day? You see, oftentimes I'm a very weak person. I don't know how to handle them. They get the best of me. And so we need to be strengthened in the inner man, that inner person, that you. We have Bert sitting right down here. We, we see him. You know what he looks like? You could even come over and shake his hand and touch him. He's real. You can pinch him. He's real. But do you really know Bert? Now, you probably don't. You can recognize him. You can see him. But that's only his physical part. He has an inner part. Bert is a person. He has a soul and a spirit. As we were talking in our class, and when it comes to marriage, this is valuable that we understand these things. You see, we think we are, uh, we, that we are a body with a soul and a spirit. We're not. We are a soul and spirit. We happen to have a body. You see, when we die, we put the body in the grave or we burn it. But the spirit and soul lives on. And that's where we need strength. And that's where Bert lives. He lives inside there. And so we really don't know him. We know, may know a few things about him. And so he's talking about that inner person. How do we react to trials that we experience in our life? And then there are duties that we must fulfill. As a husband, I must fulfill that duty. Do I have the strength to do so? Do I need God to help me in that particular duty that I have? There are tasks that we must carry out. And then there are temptations that are constantly in front of us. I was sharing with my class this morning how when I was in high school, I got with the wrong crowd and the buddies and drinking and, and carousing and, and, and getting drunk and those type of things. And, and I couldn't say no to them. This is what they, they hey, let's go do this, Al. And, okay, okay, I'm in, I'm in. I wasn't strong on the inside. I couldn't say no to the temptation that was before me. We need that inner strength. And then there are forces that we battle that we do not even see. There are great forces out there in the angel and the spirit world constantly that we battle, that we have no understanding whatsoever that's happening in our lives. That's why we need the spirit of God and that strength and that might in the inner person. And then there are other things too that we have issues in life. Maybe anger. We need God's help when it comes to anger if we have an anger problem. We need his strength. We need his might. Because that anger comes from the inner person. It may be seen through the outer person, but it originates on the inside. There may be bitterness that we are dealing with. Maybe anxiety and, and maybe depression. I've gone through depression before what I call situational depression. It wasn't clinical, 
But it was situational. I was going through a situation in my life, and I lived a year in deep depression. I was the weakest person in the world. I did not know what to do. I needed the help of God upon my life in the inner person. I functioned. I moved about. The way I treated my wife during that year, my family, and, and it was just, it was a terrible experience. I was so weak in the inner person. That's why God wants to help us in these areas. And then, of course, there's addictions. As I mentioned, with alcohol, and drugs, and pornography, and, and why can't we overcome those things? Why do we get into those issues like that of life? Because we weren't able to say no to it, and we didn't have that strength that we needed to be able to do so. And then, of course, there are evil thoughts that we deal with and obsessive thoughts. Have you ever had obsessive thoughts? You go to bed at night, an issue in your life, it's always on your mind, it just goes over and over and over. And that, well, how do you stop that? And, and how do you allow God to help you with that issue in your life? And then we, we battle inferiority and insecurity. I... I, I can I tell you how inferior I feel sometimes and how much insecurity that I have that I walk up to something like this and I'm so insecure and I don't know. You know, I was standing over there thinking about the pastors all the time. We, we hope when we get up here, we have something to say and something comes out. And then we worry about if it does, we hope it's the right thing that comes out. And then if it is the right thing that comes out, we hope we're not stuttering and stammering to get it out. Because if we're, we're insecure. And God gives us that strength to overcome that in our lives. Maybe you're an insecure person. Let me tell you something. I hope that you can become like what I have in this area. I finally realized one day that I'm okay in my own skin. And that was a long time coming. I always wanted to be like somebody else. I always wanted to look like them. I always wanted to preach like they preach. I always wanted to be, have things like they had. And finally, one day, I realized, you know, this is the way God made me. And I can't change that. And so I don't have to walk in somebody else's skin. I can walk in my own skin. And that was a great victory in my life when I finally was able to release that insecurity and to realize that this is who I am, and I am comfortable walking through life in my own skin. And then inside, there is that guilt sometimes and hostility and doubts and fears. And I could just go on and on and on when we talk about the weakness that we have. You see, oftentimes the devil lies to us and says, you know, you're pretty strong. Yeah, you're pretty good. Yeah, you got life all figured out and everything. You, you got it made. And oftentimes, a person that walks through life like that is the most insecure person in the world. Our greatest need is for spiritual power in our inner person. It's available. Now Paul then is going to tell us how it works in the next few verses. And so let's look on. Let's see what he has to say. God wants to strengthen you, no matter who you are, today in your inner person. The second thing I want to notice is our greatest challenge is to understand the eternal love of God. Our greatest challenge is to understand the eternal love of God. Let me read it. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you're being rooted and grounded in love, that you be stable, that you have a foundation in love, that you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ with passeth knowledge. And I read this verse and I said, God, why do you confuse me? I don't understand what you're saying in this scripture. You tell me to understand it and to know it, and yet you're telling me, no, you can't because it passeth all knowledge. Come on, get real with us. It doesn't make sense. The eternal love of God, to understand that love that God has for us. His love is what I call an eternal cube. It's a cube. A cube. I was going to bring my Rubik's Cube with me today. Try to see if I could work it. If God would help me to work it. Probably not. A cube has six faces, eight corners, and 12 edges. But he talks about 
the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. I want you to visualize holding a little cube in your hand. Describes God's love. How great it is. It's an eternal love. It is so broad. It reaches out into eternity. It is so long. It reaches out into eternity. It is so high. It reaches out into eternity. It is so deep. It reaches out into eternity. There is no end to the love of God. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Can you experience it? The vastness of the love of God for our life. That gives you strength. I don't know what your situation might be today, and you may feel like you're the most unloved person in the world. Oftentimes, teenagers and young kids, they just say, well, nobody loves me. I don't know how many times I've counseled with teenagers. They say, nobody loves me. Nobody loves me. And I would say, you know, that may be true. That may be true. But I want you to know this, that God loves you. That God loves you. What a great vastness of love. Are you experiencing that love today? Are you able to accept that love? Are you able to receive that love in your life? That gives you great strength to know no matter what, no matter what, God loves me. If I don't have been the only person upon the face of the earth that was born, God would love me. Jesus would have died just for me. And the Holy Spirit would have come and dwelt just within my heart and my soul. But he said, I want you to understand that. I want you to know that. And yet he says, it's so great that it passes knowledge. How you're not going to know it. The only way I can describe it to you is a cube. It's like this, breadth, length, height, and depth. Visualize that. And then extend it in all directions. And it is eternal love. You see, God is eternal. That means that God has always existed. There is no beginning with him and there's no ending with him. As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, he has always existed. And it's hard for me to comprehend that. God has always existed. His love, God is love, and so love has always existed. The vastness of his love. Don't you wish we had some of that love in America and in our culture today? What's wrong with us? Why do we behave the way that we do? They turn on the news and you see all kinds of hate, don't you? Why? Because they don't understand the love of God and how vast it is. It's great, great to know the everlasting, endless love of God. Some of these days I'm going to figure out his equation here in this scripture. I want you to understand it, Al. I want you to know the love of God. But I want you to know that past it any knowledge that you have. Oh, thank you, God. I'll, I'll work on that one. Okay, let's go to the next point, all right? Our greatest fulfillment is to experience the fullness of God. Our greatest fulfillment is to experience the fullness of God. In verse number 19, and to know the love of Christ with passive knowledge that you might be filled with the fullness of God. Oh, wow. Wow. That blows me away. To think that a little farm boy in the middle of Kansas that's standing behind this pulpit this morning or you sitting in this pew wherever you came from could be filled with all the fullness of God. I do not understand that. But I want that. I have such a desire. You see, God wants to pour his life into your life. Think about that. But for God to pour his life in your life and in my life, I first must empty my life. I have to take all that weakness that is in me, Al Schussler, all that weakness is in me, and I have to empty that so God can fill that with himself. 
Oh, how great this is to think that God of this universe wants to do that in your life. Can you imagine what it would look like in a home if a husband and wife were filled with all the fullness of God? Can you imagine what that would be like? It'd be awesome. It would be awesome. You see, I believe that we have a, a hole within our being, within our soul and our spirit that only God can fit into. Only God can fit into it. And he wants to fit into that hole. It's kind of like taking uh, a uh, square peg and putting it in a, um, a round hole. You ever tried that? Little kids try to find out where to put the little peg. Well, I think that's true with the human being. I think God, uh, he wants to enter our life and, and sometimes uh, he's not able to get there. And what we do is that we try to fill that hole up with everything else to find satisfaction. That's why we'll fill it up with pornography, we'll fill it up with alcohol, we'll fill it up with work, we'll fill it up with ourselves. We just say, boy, this is going to work, this is going to work, I'm going to be better now, everything's going to be okay, marriage is going to be good, finances are going to be good, everything's going to be great, my kids are going to be doing what they're supposed to be doing, and we just, we just fill it up with something. Something, something is going to go in that hole within our lives. And we just keep filling it up, filling it up, and we don't find any satisfaction. Why? Because that hole can only be filled by God Almighty. Only he fits that hole. And we don't want that. Because we think we're going to have to give up too much. The fact of the matter is, that's where you find might and strength and peace, and joy, and satisfaction is when God fills that hole of our life. That's what he's talking about here. That you might be filled with all of the fullness of God. Only God fits that hole. I know. I've tried to fill that hole with a lot of things in my life. And not a one of them ever brought satisfaction. Not a one of them ever brought peace or tranquility to my life. Not a one of them. And sometimes the process of emptying our lives can be very painful. It can be very, very painful. It can be done through health. Sometimes a marriage breaking up. Children acting up. Loss of finances, loss of job, whatever it might be. There are so many things that we are so weak with. And we do not know how to handle these situations. The last thing I'd like to mention. Our greatest security is to accept the fact that he is able. That he is able. Notice verse number 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Wow, that's powerful. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that Al would ever ask of him or think that he could do according to the power that worketh in us. I call that God's stretch plan. Brenda Eagle will know what I talk about when I talk about the stretch plan. I've been, I've been fasting for a lot of years, and there's never enough offerings. I've lived 50 years. My salary has come from that way for 50 years. And uh, there's never enough offering. You know, you count, here's the bills over here, here's the offering, you know. And uh, I know Brenda, she <laughs> like to tear her hair out. And I say, Brenda, don't forget God's stretch plan. He can take what we have and he can stretch it into a lot. Right, Brenda? Yeah. You're learning about that stretch plan, aren't you? <laughs> Nobody wants to live there. God's stretch plan. That which I'm not able to do because of my weakness. This scripture says God is able to do. 
even more than what I would even ask him to do, and even more than what I could even imagine or think that he could do, God will do it. He can take any talents that I have, he can stretch it and use it into something mighty for him. You're sitting there today, and you may be gifted, and you may have talents, and you may be sitting there thinking, you know, I just can't do it. I, I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I can't get up on that stage, or I can't do this. You know, I can't use my gift. I can't use my abilities because I'm, I'm insecure. Whatever it is, God can take whatever you have and whoever you are, and he can stretch you into something great and marvelous if you will allow him to do so. That's the God I see. That's the one I want. I, I, he, he's strong. He's mighty. He can, he can use, he can use little children. We've got little children in here today and kids, you know, I'll be glad when Rachel gets back and Carrie's coming back in, in Chicago at a, a, a kids uh, conference. And, um, you know, God's, God's stretching us right here. Pastor Bruce has been gone. This is the fifth Sunday. And God is able, isn't he? He's able to take us and stretch us. Pastor Bruce will be back. And when he's back, it's going to be like what it was. And it's going to be greater. Because God is able to take our weaknesses. The youth department over there got started last week. And, and God's just going to stretch it. And he's able to do that. Our kids department, our music, everything that we do here at Glenville. And the offerings, he does that as well. I wish he'd give us a million dollars once in a while. Kind of help us out a little bit. I hope you're going to ask for a million, just we'll ask for two. God can do it. So I want you to just think about what we've talked about today. God really wants to work in my life. You know why it doesn't happen? Oftentimes it's because I'm not willing to open it up. He's just looking through the window. I want him to get in there and do what he needs. And we're afraid. We're afraid of what's going to happen. We're afraid we're going to lose control of everything. But God wants us to open up our lives. He wants to pour his life into us. And always keep in mind, if you don't get anything else out of this sermon today, when you're, when you're not able, whatever issue you're facing, if you're not able, the Bible says that God is able. And you can believe that. You can take it to the bank. It's worth everything that the Bible has to say.